Hey, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. You can find it on eBay, Amazon, or from my website, thegrowboss.com. And I am sitting in the back here of Henderson Hydroponics, and I just had another customer come through and ask me about venting. And you guys, I've made videos about venting before, venting your gardens. And so we got a new sponsor on the show. I've got uh, Fresh Filters, Hyperfan, Thermoflow. And so what I thought I would do is I would take you back into the neighborhood and we'd go over venting because it's a big difference between venting one light, two light, three light rotations. There's a big difference <clears throat> on whether you should leave the glass in the hood, when to leave the glass in the hood, how to use an air conditioner, when to use an air conditioner, the difference in air conditioners, and what happens if you're growing in tents. And so there's lots of variables to go over when we're talking about venting. So it's going to be kind of a long video, so get out a bowl, get your bong out, let's smoke a bowl. Let me take a trip to the back of the store. We're going to head out into the neighborhood, and uh, let's start to check this out. Now, here in the back, you can see we've got a couple of different things going on. Let's start over here. I've got a one light rotation in hydro, right? So we're going to go over. You can see there's a hood in here on a light rail light mover ultimate ro hydro table reservoir and we've over here i've got a similar setup um <clears throat> we've got it set up in media over here now this is a fresh filter and i'm going to tell you something super important about fresh filters right um i'm going to tell you that people that grow cannabis for profit especially the profit growing cannabis community <clears throat> you guys are all about the money and i know Everybody wants horsepower and nobody wants to pay for brakes, but I'm going to tell you something fresh filter if Making sure that your neighbors don't smell your grow if making sure that your grow is to stay private Then fresh filter is the number one filter on the market I mean what a filter like this is $40 more than a no-name overseas brand and there is if your grow is mission critical that nobody knows spend the extra 40 bucks on a filter there's going to be no better money that you can spend, right? I mean, lights are cheap nowadays, right? So there's no better money that you're going to spend than on something like a fresh filter. It's got a hyper fan on it. And it doesn't matter if you're growing in hydro or you're growing in media. So I'm going to come over here. Now, I've set up a couple of tents here. And it doesn't matter if you're doing like a one tent grow, a two tent, or a three light rotation. The ideas are still the same. And it works like this. If you have one light... You're going to grow and flower in the same spot, so it's going to take a long time to get that harvest. Now, if you have a two light rotation, you're going to veg and flower at the same time, so you're going to get more frequent harvests. And if you have a three light rotation, you have two flower tents, one veg tent, then you're going to be getting a harvest every 30 days. And it doesn't matter if you have a one, two, or three light rotation. The filter, the fan filter isn't going to change. Now, how you set it up whether you use um, just the one fan filter and you run it into a tent or use a splitter like this, or you use two splitters. So you can set it into three tents and suck the air out of three tents. There's a couple of things that I want you to consider in the relationship between venting and heat. Now, first thing, guys are always talking about venting the tent from the top, venting your air from the top, because that's where the hot air is. Fuck that. I'm going to tell you something. If you've got a five by five by seven tent, that's 25 square feet by seven tall. It's 175 cubic feet. This is a six inch hyper fan from fresh filter. It does 200 some cubic feet a minute. That means it will empty all the air out of your tent in less than a minute. Right? Even if you have two five by five tents, it's going to empty all the air out of your tents super fast. And so if you're having heat issues, a bigger fan is not going to solve anything. Emptying the air out any faster is not going to solve anything. In fact, if anything, it's going to create more of a problem for you because the temperature is based on the air coming into your garden, right? So if you have 80 degree air coming in, it doesn't matter how fast you vent it. The air coming in is going to be, the temperature of the air coming in is going to be the limiting factor. So at some point you're going to need an air conditioner. And it doesn't matter if you have an LED, and I know they tell you that LEDs run cooler, but then you guys buy two of them to put in the tent. So listen, all you end up doing is spending more money on LEDs and wasting your money. It's always better to do like an HID or a T5 light, highest yield, best quality, overall the lowest cost of production is to always use HIDs or T5s. 
I mean, maybe you can get a super sick deal for like 80% off an LED. But beyond that, I would just never bother with LEDs. Okay. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the fresh filters. They got different sizes depending on how much you're using. They've got, I mean, six. They've got eight inch filters, 10, 12, 14 inch filters. They've got lots of filter sizes. I mean, you can stick them in the corner of your garden down in there. Um, Chuck? You can stick them in the corner of your garden down down in there. Like uh, I've got that one down in there, right? It does. You can stick them up on top. Doesn't matter where you put your filter. Doesn't matter where you put your fan. Those details are irrelevant. And if you think you're going to solve your heat problem by putting your fan filter, I'm telling you, I dealt with 10,000 growers, lots of grows. Has no bearing where you put the fan filter, okay? The next thing is a lot of you guys talk about uh, two fan filters, pushing air in and sucking air out. Listen, totally unnecessary, right? Um, especially in the smaller gardens. I mean, seriously, if you suck air out, air has to come in, right? I mean, otherwise you're going to stop sucking it out if no air can come in and the whole tent will collapse into one of those little round black holes that Wiley Coyote throws in front of the roadrunner. You know what I'm saying? So your air is always getting sucked in. Now, when we talk about venting, there's a couple of different ways. Let's say you have two tents like this and you're going to vent them into the room. So you have a fan filter like this, and you suck the air out of the two tents, blow it into the fresh filter, and back into the room. Okay, so you're using the room as the staging area. You'll have a hyper fan like this. You can set the temp humidity so the fan turns on. It'll suck the air out of the tent. I mean, you got a fan speed controller too, depending on which way you want to go. You can't use them together. And so if you're sucking the air out of two tents and into the room, the room is the staging area. So you're going to want to cool the room, add CO2 to the room. Now, if you're one of those guys who's taking the air out of something like this, you've got your fan filter and you're blowing it up through the attic, worst move you could possibly make. I mean, think about it. If you blow air out of your house, air has to come into your house from somewhere too, right? So let's just say you've got a six inch fan. Um, you're running it at uh, 300 CFM. 315 CFM, your room is 10 by 10 by 8. That's 800 cubic feet. That means a six inch fan like this will empty your room out if you're venting out of the room every two and a half minutes. Now, I just want to point out that the same principle applies to sucking the air out of a tent that it does a room. So if you're in a bedroom and you're blowing out of the bedroom or you're blowing out of the window to the outside, then you're emptying all the air from that room, blowing it outside every two and a half minutes. I think about that. That means that you have to suck air in from under your door. But what else does that mean? That means that the air from the hallway goes under the door. And if we continue to work backward, that means that the air on the stairs has to go into the hallway and under the door. And that means that the air in your living room has to go up the stairs, into the hallway, into the grow room, out, you know what I mean? Out through the window. That means that you're sucking air from outside, under the front door, into the living room, up the stairs, into the hallway, into the bedroom where you're growing, and then you're blowing it outside. That means that you're taking all of your house air. And if you've got like a 2,000 square foot house. That means like every eight minutes, you're emptying all the air in your house. That would be like running your air conditioner with the window open, with the windows open. You know what I mean? Like you just wouldn't do that. So if you're exhausting your house, insane move. I mean, why are you running a 3,500 watt air conditioner to cool your garden? I mean, that's an insane move, right? And a lot of people fail because of that. It's crazy. It's crazy. And a lot of you guys will put the fan filter on the floor. You'll go through the hood up and out. And then you've created a situation where this tent is sealed, right? Because if you're blowing through the hood out the other side, the tent is sealed. Now ask yourself, why does the inside of your car 20 degrees hotter than the outside? How come the car gets so hot? And it's because the light that goes through the window gets converted to heat. And the light that hits your steering wheel, hot, 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 hot. You all grab a steering wheel that was too hot. That's because light gets converted to heat. All light is heat. Don't care if you buy an LED. Don't care if you buy what light you buy. All light is heat. So if you're in a situation where you're, you have a sealed tent, that's the worst thing you could do for building up heat. Now, You've got a fan filter, you go through the light, up and out the attic, you know, up and out through the roof, out through a window. So the tent's sealed. So what do you guys do? You guys buy a second fan, and then you put one fan in the tent. 
Okay, so where does the fan in the tent go? Okay, so the fan in the tent blows back into the room. So you suck air out of the tent back into the room. But again, that doesn't solve the problem of having a 3,500 watt AC running in your house and you're venting all the air, all the air conditioner out through the roof or the window. It's a real problem, right? And so why does the tent get hot? I mean, if you're venting through the hood, why does the tent get hot? Why do you have to buy a second fan for the tent? And it's because when you look at a setup like this, like over here, right? You check this out. When you look at a setup like this, that's because here again, there's glass in the hood and the glass converts light into heat. The sheet metal of your hood and the bigger the hood, the more the sheet metal converts light into heat. So the bigger the hood, the more the glass, the more heat that's going to radiate from the bulb into, into your garden. And it doesn't matter if you have an LED with fans on it, right? It's going to suck the heat away from the heat sink and blow it into your garden. So even if you were to vent this hood through and through, so no air was exchanged in the garden, you're still not cooling anything because cooling requires an air conditioner. All you're doing is exhausting heat, but you're only exhausting the heat in the hood. You're not even exhausting the heat in the room. So let's say you get a fan and you exhaust the heat from the room, right? So now you've got one fan for the tent and you've got one fan for the light. Dude, how much money are you gonna spend setting up your garden? It's insane. This is not how growing cannabis indoors works effectively. Sure, some of you guys have cold air outside. You're on the East Coast. You got, But again, if you have cold air outside, open your window and blow it into the room. Don't take your house air and vent your heat. That's crazy too. So again, one of the best things that you guys can do is take the glass out of the hood and then just put a fan filter on one side. So something like this, you would have a fan filter like this. You would just duct the one side of the ducting through the tent into the hood and the hood would have no glass so you would suck the air through the tent port on this side up into the hood out through the ducting and down into the filter you'd physically be blowing down into the filter now that's understanding the situation and how to use the equipment because i mean literally the second hottest thing in your garden is the glass the first hottest thing in your garden of course is the bulb and so you have to consider venting because especially if you're going to seal the garden by venting through the tent, you have to add CO2, right? I mean, light water CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. So nowhere in this equation do nutrients exist. You can't get away from the C, from the carbon and CO2. You can't get away from it. It's what the plant makes sugar out of. And so there's this relationship between light and heat and venting. And once you buy the fan filter, Fuck, you might as well do a three light rotation. I mean, you only need one fan filter to do a three light rotation. You just get two Ys connected on this side, and now you've got three ports. You could do a three light rotation and get a harvest every month. I mean, that's super smart, right? I mean, if you have one 1,000 watt light, you veg for 30 days, you flower for 60 days, you get a pound and a half in 90 days. Pound and a half in 90 days is a half pound a month. You get a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower. And now because you're vegging and flowering at the same time, you get a harvest every 60 days instead of every 90 days. But because you have a 600 watt in flower, you only get a pound every 60 days instead of a pound and a half every 90 days. But oddly enough, a pound every 60 days is a half a pound a month. And a pound and a half every 90 days is a half a pound a month. So I don't care if you have a one light rotation with a thousand watt light or a two light rotation with a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower. In fact, I don't even care if you do a three light rotation with three 400 watt lights, right? Because a 400 watt light's gonna get you half a pound. And if you have three lights, one in veg and two in flower, you're gonna get a half pound a month. So a thousand watts worth of electricity on average gets you a half a pound a month. I don't care if you have one 1,000, a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower or three 400 watt setups. Doesn't matter to me, doesn't matter to the yield, yield stays the same. But what does matter is that if you have two lights in flower, then you can have one on during the day and one on at night. Sure, you still have one veg on, so you'll have two lights on for some portion of the day. But you got to admit, that is a much better, a much more effective way of controlling heat by instead of buying one 1,000, you buy three 400s. 
because the two flower lights, the yield stays the same. Because on average, if you use a thousand watts worth of light electricity, you're going to get a, a, a half a pound a month. Whether it be a half pound a month, a pound every two months, or a pound and a half every three months. The yield doesn't change because it's based on light. Okay, yes, you do have to spend a little bit more on the lights, but lights are pretty cheap nowadays right and so you could buy three four foot eight bulb t5s and get that half a pound a month and and again you're just going to buy one fan filter for one tent two tent three tents doesn't matter how many tents you have you could just set the fan filter in the room filter the whole room which is actually an interesting point because if you have one fan filter and it's just filtering the room. You're doing the same error over and over. If you do the same error over and over, you don't need as big a fan filter because it's continually knocking the, it's continually removing the scent molecules from your garden. Now, you take a look at something like this. If you're venting, so you're doing one and done, you're going to want a bigger filter. So if you're blowing out of the room, you're going to want a bigger filter. Why? Because you're only filtering the air once. If you're filtering the air multiple times, Chuck, you got a couple customers. If you're filtering the air multiple times because you're keeping the air in the room and you're doing it over and over, you're going to have to, of course, deal with the humidity. You're going to have to, of course, deal with adding CO2. But again, CO2 gets you 25% more yield, right? Light, water, CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. Nowhere in the photosynthesis equation do nutrients exist. It's all the same shit. But CO2... The plants take the C from the carbon dioxide and they make sugar out of it. C6, H12, O6. Otherwise, where else would they get the C from? So if you're running multiple lights and you want a real garden and you really want that yield, you're going to have to add CO2. And once you add CO2, you have to stop venting, right? I mean, don't listen. The last thing you want to do is buy one of those ridiculous $750 uh, what do they call them? Uh, it's that uh, fuzzy logic. Oh my God. If you have to, probably the dumbest thing you could buy more than an LED would be a fuzzy logic controller. So you're going to shut the fan off, pump the CO2 up. The heat comes back. You're going to vent the heat with your house. Fuck all that. Seal up the room. Buy yourself a $150, $200 dehumidifier and get that yield and add that CO2. I mean, there's a couple different types of air conditioners, right? There's the one duct air conditioner and a one duct air conditioner works. It sucks 400 CFM in 300 CFM gets returned to the room. 100 CFM goes out the exhaust. I mean, if you think about that, if you take the exhaust, the hot part that cools the motor and run it out the window, if you have an 800 CFM room every eight minutes, you're taking all the air you just cooled and blow it out the window. I mean, think about that in the history of consumer reports. No product ever got a worse review than the one duct AC. The least efficient thing you can do in all the land is own a one duct AC. Now, if you're growing in a garage where the vent from the AC doesn't matter, that's great. You take the AC, you put it outside the tent, and you blow cold air into the tent. But again, it's a 1300 watt AC. So if you've got a 1000 watt light and a 1300 watt AC, you've got 2300 watts worth of electricity to produce a pound and a half every 90 days or a half pound a month. So it's costing you 2300 watts to produce a half pound a month, where most people are spending a 1000 watts. <laughs> what a disaster that is. And and so the one duct AC has a purpose if you're in a garage where the exhaust doesn't matter and you only want the cold air. But if you're in your house, you're going to want a two duct AC. A two duct AC is interesting because it takes out that outside air, cools the motor and blows it back out. But the problem again is it's not only is it not sealed very well. I mean, it's sealed better than a one duct, but it's not very efficient. A window AC in all cases is the best AC you can buy. So you go out and spend $350 on a window AC. And now you can do a three light rotation because if you have 3000 Watts in flower, the two flower lights will never be on at the same time. So you set three, five by five tents up in a room or three, four by eight tents with thousand watt light on a light rail light movers. And suddenly you're getting a pound and a half, two pounds a month. And you've got a window AC that can cool it all because you only ever have two lights on at a time, veg in one flower, veg in the other flower, or you might just have, <laughs> you might just have one flower or the other flower light on because again, 
The flower lights are 12-12, veg is 18-6. So the veg light won't be on all day. So now you have two lights max, 1,000 watt max with a window AC. Now that leaves you enough cooling capacity to add a burner. Or even if you don't want a burner, you can add the CO2 tanks. And so there's a lot of thought that goes into what's efficient. Because if you've got a one duct AC, you're blowing all the air out of your house. You got a thousand watt light, a 1300 watt AC, and a 3500 watt house AC going on. You got a 1000 watt light, you're getting a pound and a half month for a 1300 watt AC plus a 3500 house. That's 4800 watts on cooling you're spending for a thousand watt light. So you're at 5000 watts to grow a pound and a half, a half pound a month. It's insane. And it doesn't matter if you buy an LED, you're still going to have to cool, you're still going to have to deal with the heat. I mean, LEDs just using electricity produces heat. And then when they tell you to put two in the space, not only are you spending, wasting thousands of dollars on LEDs, you could just buy one $120 used light off Craigslist, go to your local hydro store, spend $175 on a new setup versus $1,500, $2,000 on an LED. Fuck that. The bud's the same. I mean, you've never looked at a sack of weed and said, oh my God, this was grown with an HID. You've never looked at a sack of weed and said, I'm not going to buy this. It was harvested seven days early. Do you know how many of you guys come to me and complain? Oh, grow boss. When, sorry, not complain. You know how many guys ask when the perfect time to harvest is? Fuck that. You can't tell, especially if it sits for four weeks and cures. You have no idea when it was harvested. You can't tell anything about the bud by looking at it. Maybe if it got a little too hot because the scent trichomes, the, the scent glands, the trichomes for, that give the, the bud its smell are the first things to burn off in heat. But you don't know anything about a bud. Why? You can't, I mean, I used to smoke 6% border weed. I don't get any higher today off smoking 28% cannabis than I do off 6%. Why? Because when you inhale cannabis through your lungs, you absorb a certain fraction of it, like 6%. And you only have a certain amount of receptors in your brain for cannabis too. So once you get so high, you can't get any higher. You, right? You, like me, just smoke cannabis all day long, right? Just joint after joint, like chain smoke them. But you're not getting... Now, if you eat it, that's something different. The cannabis gets metabolized by your liver, goes into your bloodstream in a different way than when it goes through your lungs. Now, when you eat it, it's central nervous system. So you can, like, like it's like being inebriated when you eat cannabis, not the same thing. But when you smoke it, why are you spending thousands of dollars on equipment when something as simple as this will get you the same bud? Listen, and even if it's 25% instead of 28, you can't tell the difference. So when we talk about quality, yield, when we talk about weight, you have to put into perspective the reality of the situation. And the reality is you can't tell the fucking difference. All you can tell if it was grown right or wrong. You can't tell what light it was used, what nutrients it was used. That's why whenever we go over the stuff, I always try to focus on the equipment and how to use it properly. This is a two light rotation. 200 watt veg, 400 watt flower. 400 watt veg, 600 watt flower. 600 watt veg, 1000 watt flower. 1000 watt veg, 2000 watt flower. It's a two light rotation. It's gonna get you a harvest every 60 days and the amount of your harvest will be based on the amount of light that you have. You might have two different size tents. This, these two tents are the same size because it makes it even and equal. Um, for, you know, easy for me to use in a demonstration. You know, here's thermal flow ducting, guaranteed, 100% guaranteed not to blow out. Because halfway through flower, when you have big lights, bright lights that produce a lot of heat, and you have quality fans like this fresh, like this hyper fan from Fresh Filter, they swell up the ducting lines. And if you're venting, or you're blowing in there and you have a ducting blowout because you didn't buy thermoflow, you're going to blow all that heat into your garden and kill your crop. What's the number one failure? Mid-crop flower. Ducting blowout. Of course. You don't know that because, I mean, you don't deal with a thousand customers a year, but I know that because I do. Okay, so here's a fresh filter. Now, you could just have the six inch hyper fan, fresh filter, six inch. Now you can suck or blow into this filter. If you blow into it, you're gonna wanna take off the pre-filter. If you suck through it, you're gonna wanna add the pre-filter. If you have the glass in the hood, you're gonna wanna blow through it. You're not gonna suck through a hood with glass. The ducting will come out the other side. 
And now that's one way to vent the hood. But if you want to vent the hood in the tent, again, you just take the glass out. And again, this is all about understanding the difference between one, two, and three light rotations. And frankly, <coughs> you don't even have to hook up the ducting to the hood. I mean, you could run four inch ducting like this and have an eight inch hood. Why? Because this fan is going to suck all the air out of the tent in 45 seconds or less. So who cares about venting the hood? Once you understand the thermographic profile, once you understand that the hood is going to produce X heat, it doesn't matter if you vent the hood or the tent, you're going to suck all the air out of the tent. So who cares if you suck from the top or the bottom or directly from the hood? And I know you guys want to focus on the little tiny details, the minutia, but the reality is that's not how the equipment operates effectively. I know you believe that's how it operates effectively because you guys keep coming to my store buying one fan to blow in and another to suck out. What I'm saying is, is that there's different pieces of equipment and you have to understand how to use them all. I mean, you have to understand the difference. This is a fresh intake filter. So let's say that you're blowing air out. Air has to come into the room from somewhere. Let's say you've got a nice garden, a sealed garden. Okay. You put a hole in the wall or in a door or something over here. You would put the intake filter where the air is coming into the room. That'll keep bugs and mold and mildew. And maybe your neighbor is, is, is making seeds. You know what I mean? They're trying to come up with a strain and they've got pollen. You suck that pollen into your room, there goes your crop. And so you would put something like an intake filter on the, on wherever the air is coming in. You don't need a fan for this. This is passive. I, I suppose you could add a fan to it because you're a builder and you want to buy everything. But the reality is this is a high flow, low resistance filter. It's not meant for the scent. It's meant to keep mold, spores, pollen, bugs out of your room. So this is an intake filter. It's really light too, because it's pleated carbon. It's not activated carbon that like it, that's in the fresh filters. And there are some variations on the theme. This is an inline filter. Think of it like a muffler. If you are suck, you can literally blow through this filter, collect the air at the other end. You can put ducting on both sides. It's an inline filter. So it works like a muffler. You wouldn't use this in a tent. Obviously you would use one of these kinds of filters or outside, but if you were, if you had a fan filter and you were taking the air from the room, you had a fan on the wall, you were taking the air out of the room, you could use an inline filter where you plug into both sides, the air goes through, it stays contained and it goes out the ducting on the other side. That's one way to use, I mean, that's how you use these. Now, Fresh also has a hyperfan built into their Fresh filter, the hyperfan Stealth. So instead of doing something like this, this has a fan filter built into one thing and it's in line too. And so you have to be aware of the variations on the theme. So you're buying the correct equipment because I mean, a lot of guys come to my store with just the stacks of equipment and they have no idea how to use it. And so you look at something like this, this setup over here, right? And you can see how in the corner there's a fan filter. Okay. But you might add another fan up on the ceiling that only vents in case of an emergency. So you might take a hyperfan climate controller like this, like the hyperfan climate controller like this. And if the room gets too hot or too humid, it activates an exhaust only fan. Now, if you take a fan like this, your exhaust only fan has a filter built into it, or you could just straight vent the air like that. Again, it all depends on how mission critical the smell is, the you keeping your garden a secret. Maybe you don't care at all. But I'll tell you something about blowing the scent of cannabis that's worth $2,500 a pound out. Think about the kind of kid you were. Think about the kind of kid I was. Do you really need your neighbor's kid in your house? Do you really need a negligent homicide charge? Because you killed an intruder shot them up in the middle of the night because they broke into your house, came home and found them in your house. You don't need that hassle. Everybody wants horsepower. Nobody wants to pay for brakes. But the reality is a, an emergency vent fan in a garden with thousands and thousands of dollars, you guys are buying a fan to push the air in. That's ridiculous. 
But an emergency fan where things only happen in high temperatures and events or high humidity and saves your crop, dude, that's pretty smart. That's worth the money. And so there are a lot of ways to set up this equipment. Again, you can have a fan filter on the floor that does the same air over and over, right? You just take your hyperfan fresh filter, put it on the floor, does the same air over and over, no venting. So where you buy a fuzzy logic controller that, that turns off your CO2 and turns on your fan and then turn, dude, fuck that. All you have to do is buy like a hyperfan, um, a hyper, you know, a, a climate controller. If it gets too hot or too humid, you turn on a hyperfan that only vents in an emergency. But for the rest of the time, you just keep a fan filter, a fresh filter fan on the floor, and it cleans the air over and over. And then if you have to vent, the air already doesn't smell because you have a fresh filter going over and over with it. I mean, these are very subtle concepts. I can't believe that there's a $750 fuzzy logic controller on the market. You would think that would bankrupt a company that makes them. Uh, who the fuck would ever buy that product? What, what a tragedy for a waste of money, a $700 fuzzy logic controller. Fuck that. You know what I mean? Get yourself a, get yourself a hyper fan, get yourself a climate controller and only vent when it gets too hot. Then now that you're only venting when it gets too hot, get yourself an AC so it never gets too hot. Then all you have to do is buy yourself like a CO2 monitor and that way your room's always at 1500 PPM CO2. I mean, fuck, CO2 is going to get you 25% more. Why would you ever vent? Why would you ever not have maximum CO2 when the light's on? Why would you spend more money on a fuzzy logic controller and you still have to buy CO2, right? I mean, you still have to buy a burner or a tank or, you know, TNB, right? You still have to buy some sort of CO2 for the room because if the room's sealed, light, water, CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. If you take out the CO2, how are you going to make sugar? It's over. And if you vent, why are you paying the money for an air conditioner? And so getting your fan filter, exhaust, hood, glass, AC venting system, I, I can't express to you how critical that is to a great garden because, you know, all buds the same. I mean, until they started testing bud in a facility and selling in a dispensary, you would literally look at the bud, smell the bag, right? You'd crush up the bud, put it in here. You, Dude, if, if all the THC and CBDs are in the caps on the stalks of the trichomes, and if 99% of the weight of your bud is, is flower weight, it's not even the keef, you're literally smelling and looking at a bag and, and it's worthless. The information that it's giving you is worthless because you know, when you get a good bag home and you take it home and you smoke it and it's harsh because they use too many nutrients, you can't return that bag. And so what the fuck are we talking about? You can get almost no useful information by looking at a bag. And we haven't been testing the bud for the last 50 years, right? We've just been smoking it. Shit. We were smoking border weed. The type of person that goes in that wants to buy cannabis, that wants the best fucking equipment because they're going to do the best fucking job. I mean, you think the equipment catches crab on a crab boat? These guys have to use the equipment, right? I mean, look at, you think, you think racing on circle track, NASCAR racing, they're the drivers. Look at Tesla. Oh my God, they had a crash. It's the driver not using the equipment properly. So there's this relationship between the money we spend on equipment and what we think we know. You're a new grower. If you buy an LED, your dumb ass is going to fail, even if you get the harvest. Why? Because why would you spend 15 times the money to get what's essentially the same bud? And in all the history of growing and smoking cannabis, it was like, oh, shit, the bud smells dank. It's like chronic, right? Or it's, oh, it's border weed. We didn't even know the percentages of it. Is there a difference between 25 and 28%? I suppose you're going to have to ask that for yourself. I don't, you know what I mean? Like for me, 23% bud, dude, spectacular, right? As long as they didn't hit it with too many nutrients. So it burns harsh. You know, I'm super pleased when we talk about curing it. 
Have you ever said, oh my God, you, 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 didn't, you should have waited five more days. I don't want the sack of weed. No. And so really what this comes down to is equipment. This is hydroponic equipment, right? Check this out. This is hydro gear. What do we know about hydro? We know that things happen faster. When you go to a dispensary, do they tell you the bud was grown in hydro? No, because it doesn't fucking matter. Do they tell you what light it was grown with or what nutrients they use? No, because it doesn't fucking matter. I'll tell you the truth about hydro. Things happen faster. So if you're a new grower and you do hydro, the chance of you killing your shit goes up because, well, there's no recovering from hydro. Also, you don't have a veg and flower when you do hydro. With hydro, you have a mother room because you take lots of clones in hydro because since you veg and flower in the same spot, you don't want an eight-week veg. You want a three-week veg. Dude, could you imagine an eight-week veg and an eight-week flower? That's four months. If you were in hydro and you got a harvest every four months, that's three a year. Fuck that. So you want a short veg time. And if you have a short veg time, that means more plants because they're smaller because you didn't grow them as big. So plant camp goes up with hydro, which makes sense because hydro is gangster. Now, hydro is also a week to 10 days shorter. But again, why is it shorter? Well, one, things happen faster in hydro. But two, if you're trying to do hydro, it's because you're slanging. And if you're selling bud, you don't want to wait an extra week. You're going to harvest as soon as you get the weight. What the fuck does a hydro grower care about the quality they want the weight if they didn't want the weight they would be growing in soil right because all the magic happens at the end all the trichomes i mean if you're so concerned about the last five days of growth why why are you so concerned about the about when the perfect time to cut down is because you think it's important so let's say it is important if you chop 10 days early and you're worried about five days, you didn't even make it to the zone of the right cure, of chopping them down at the right time. So harvest, especially when you think about it, 99% of the weight that you buy from a bag of weed is cellulose, right? It's the plant. It's not the keef. It's not the trichomes. It's not the CBD. It's not the THC. So when cannabis was grown illegally, Hydro was faster. They got the weight. They got the smell. What the fuck did they care about your high? Plus, if border weed gets you high, hydro still grows great fucking bud. Now, we come over to something like a media-based grow. If you're going to let it grow the extra week so you get those trichomes, I mean, if it takes a week longer, why are you so concerned about when to harvest? You know, buds look good. Take the top third. Make two or three passes in the home grow. Let the bottom finish. I mean, if you vegged for four weeks or eight weeks and flowered for eight weeks, even if you have a two light rotation like this, where you get a harvest every 60 days, why wouldn't you wait five extra days? I mean, you've got an four, eight week veg, eight week flower, let's say. Your, your, your plants are four months old, even though you're getting a harvest every two months. Your plants are four months old let alone the clones. So now you've got five months invested in this plant. So why wouldn't you let them go five extra days, right? Why wouldn't you let them go over here? Why wouldn't you let them go five extra days? You're five months deep. You're 150 days deep. Who cares about five days? It's 3%. And if all the magic happens at the end, why are you in such a rush to cut down? Now, Historically, you've been in such a rush to cut down because it's been illegal and because you don't want to get caught with it. So you would chop them down as soon as you could. That's why people grew in hydro. But when you grow in soil, I mean, why wouldn't you wait five days? And I'll tell you why. Because growers are 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive males. And you want horsepower, but nobody wants to pay for brakes. And that's why you come to my store and you look at this kind of equipment and you don't want to spend money on a quality filter versus a no-name brand. You just want, you just, you spend $1,500 on an LED, fuck that. Spend 150 on a T5 or an HID and spend $40 more on a fresh filter. Get yourself a real fan. Understand the relationship between venting, one, two, and three light rotations. Get yourself a window AC or a two duct AC. A fuzzy logic controller. I'll tell you a little secret about selling fuzzy logic controllers in the store. I have them, but they are cash and debit only. I will not sell one on a credit card 
because with a credit card, you can come back to the store and be like, oh, dude, listen, I'm just going to declare it on my credit card or take it back and give me my money back. And then I'm stuck with it. I won't even make the sale on a credit card. It is literally a cash only deal. I don't even want to do it on a debit. That's the reality of the situation of growing with a fuzzy logic controller. Literally dumbest thing in the market you can buy fuzzy logic controller because you still need the CO2 monitor if it's built into the fuzzy logic controller. Okay, you'll still need a CO2 monitor controller. You'll still need either a tank with a reg or a burner. And the cost of two tanks and a reg is the same as the burner. And if you need the monitor, and it doesn't matter if you buy tanks or a burner, the cost of providing CO2 to your garden doesn't change. So if you get the right CO2 setup, and you have the right venting setup, and you have the right hoods, and you have the right size, I mean, you can literally buy your CO2. You can... I mean, if we add this up, you can buy the best filter on the market, a hyperfan. You can get yourself a second fan with an emergency controller and the hyperfan. And when you look at one of these things, I mean, you can set two fans up, an in and an out. This thing, this hyperfan climate controller is so smart. It'll blow air into the room and suck it out based on the temperature. So what I'm suggesting is, is that if you understand how to use the equipment, if you understand the value in spending $40 on thermoflow instead of $10 on dryer ducting, and you understand the value of the lack of value in an LED or a fuzzy logic controller, if you understand the true value of brakes versus horsepower, and you get the right balance between the products, you save not only so much money, the chance of your success just skyrockets. So not only do you buy the right lights and the right fresh filter and the right hyperfan and thermal flow ducting, not only do you buy the right products, they cost less than buying the wrong ones. And that makes sense, right? Because what do you learn as you get older? Um, it's always cheaper to do it right the first time, right? It's always cheaper to do it right the first time. And so that's why I laugh at all these other videos. That's why I challenge any of the other growers to call my show and to tell me what they know. You can die. Call my show. I'll call your show. As long as you get more views than I do, I'll call your show. And you can diagnose, we'll play who can diagnose the problem better. Because the reality is I sit here in a hydroponic store. I've read all the books out there. I know what's in all the books. And the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, my book, is the only one that answers all the questions in the hydro store. Look at what I've done. Chuck's pan around here. Look at this. Look, start over here. I mean, look at this. We got, oh, that's raw nutrients right there. Love those things, especially in hydro. Here's a hydro setup. I mean, look at the hydro setup. CO2 controller, fan, you know what I mean? Light box, ultimate RO, the table setup, a res. I set the same thing up over here, right? I mean, ballast, we got a dual duct fan, dual duct AC. You know, we've got all of the things set up here. Why do I do that? Because when people come in and they ask me questions, I would like to be able to answer them not only intelligently, but correctly. That's why I build this stuff. That's why Nickel City sends me this pallet of equipment to raffle off on my webcast. That's why companies like Fresh Filter and Light Rail Light Movers, that's why they invest in me because most stores just get more inventory. But if I'm gonna teach you how to grow, you need to see the equipment set up. You need to see the relationship between a one, two, and three light rotation. You need to conceptually understand if you have one light, it's going to take you 90 days to get a harvest. But if you have two lights, it takes you 60. And if you have three lights, you get a harvest every 30 days. But if you use a thousand watts worth of electricity, it doesn't matter how you break it up. One, 1,000 pound and a half every 90 days, four, 600 pound every 60 days, three, 400 half pound every 30 days. That way, you can make an intelligent decision about what you want and how to vent. That's why I just love the advertisers that I have because there are a thousand Chinese products out there. I see them on the internet. I see them on eBay. I see them from all the different vendors. You know, even the distributors sell Chinese products. And some of them work. 
better than others. But in some circumstances, there are some conditions that warrant spending the extra money. You're always better off spending $40 more to buy a high quality filter so you don't find your neighbor's kid in your house. It's always better to buy the right AC because even if you use LEDs, they still get hot. So if you buy the right AC, you don't have to buy an LED. Spend $350 on an AC. Don't spend $1,500 on an LED because you think you're going to get better bud and the light's cooler. That's not the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that all lights heat and all electricity is heat. And it doesn't matter if you use, if you use electricity for an LED or, or T5, an HID, a CMH, a LEC, a DE, SE. The reality is, is that everything in the store works. LEDs grow cannabis. HIDs, T5s, they all grow cannabis. You can buy a cheap filter, expensive filter, cheap fan, blah, 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 blah. You can buy cheap ducting. But I know what happens when you buy cheap ducting instead of Thermoflow. Thermoflow has a 100%, it is a non-fire propagating ducting and a 100% no blowout guarantee. Dude, do you know what's going to happen to you if you burn down your house and you kill a firefighter that comes in? It's a negligent homicide if you kill the neighbor's kid because you find them in your house. You don't know why they were there, but when the cops show up, we burn your house down. They're going to find that shit and you're going to get a penalty. You're going to go to jail. You're going to get arrested and charged with things that were completely unnecessary because you didn't buy the safety stuff and you spent the money on equipment you didn't need, want, was never going to work for you. The number one way to fail when growing cannabis is to buy an LED. The LEDs work. It's that the people who buy them tend to think that they're smarter than the plant. I mean, it's a fucking cannabis plant, right? I mean, it's, it's plant. There ain't nothing you can do that's going to speed it up. All you can do is grow it properly, not kill it for three months and then harvest. And so the biggest thing that the biggest mistake that comes through my store is the eagerness. I'm going to do it right now. My plants will be done by the end of the week. I'll put my light right on top of them. I'm going to buy the most expensive equipment because the most expensive equipment is going to get me the best bud. I have people all the time tell me I switch nutrients and my plants are doing better. Well, there might have been something about the nutrient, but you didn't solve the problem. Because if you had solved the problem with the original nutrient, you wouldn't have had to switch. And if your new nutrient was a problem, you can't solve it because you didn't know what was wrong with the old one. So you need a PPM meter, a pH meter. You need to understand the dynamics, the thermodynamics of your system. You need to understand the difference between this type of fresh filter, between a, a, a fresh filter with a hyperfan in it, an inline fresh filter, you need to understand the difference of an intake filter. You need to understand the difference between dryer ducting and thermoflow 100% guaranteed not to blow out ducting. Because you spend $1,500 on an LED. Fuck that. Spend $30 more on ducting. Spend $40 more on a filter. Get your house wired safely so you don't blow out a circuit and burn shit down. Get yourself an exhaust fan. So if there's a problem in your room, you can vent the heat out. Get yourself CO2 tanks or a burner and get yourself a CO2 monitor instead of a fuzzy logic controller. I'm going to tell you a little secret before we end the video, okay? 85% of growers fail. And 99% of those growers fail because they buy the wrong equipment. Whether you spend too much, you try to do something stupid like a bunch of CFLs, you know the thing where you see those videos where they put like 20 CFLs in there? Imagine the wiring mess behind that. And so all I'm suggesting is, is that the number one tip I can give all growers is to thoroughly understand the equipment that you're buying. Because I run a $49 an hour helpline where people call my helpline, right? I do, I do probably two a day. Two calls a day that I have to deal with. I will tell you 50% of my calls come from LEDs and hydro, LEDs and DWC. Why? Because, well, the LED companies aren't distributed by any of the major companies, by the major distributors, you know, Sunlight, Hydro Farm, BWGS. I mean, sure, they all have their own LEDs, but the ones that are self-distributed, Advanced Nutrients, Kind LED, Solar Storm, the ones that go after the growers directly, there's a thousand websites and three distributors. The relationship of the information that you're getting comes from people who want to sell you equipment. I want to sell you equipment too, but I don't care which equipment you buy. I would rather you be successful 
and ask me less questions than for you to blow your shit up, catch it on fire, burn it to the ground, spend all the money. And frankly, I love it when you guys do that because then you come back to my store and you sell me all that used equipment for pennies on the dollar. I sit on it and sell it. I've got lots of used equipment. Shit, you can see I've got three Solar Storm 880s right there I bought for 300 bucks each. I'll sell them for 900 because I'll sit on them because I'm a store. But the number one way to fail in this industry when it comes to growing cannabis, personal, gangster level, facility level, the number one way to fail is to not understand the equipment that you're buying or how to use it. So when you walk into a hydro store or you log on and you do 30 seconds worth of research and somebody tells you, oh, this is all the equipment. I'll tell you you're throwing your money away because I've seen thousands of those grows. Because there is no advertising. You all come in and tell me the same thing. Oh, I did this research and this company told me this and this and this. You know, I got the best bud. I got the most weight. I got the highest THC. I got 20% more. I got terpenes. I got, you guys know all the shit that they tell you, right? But what fucking company tells you, listen, sure, we're not quite as expensive, but our product's not quite as good. Ask yourself, if you took all the LED manufacturers and you put them in a room and you held up a mic in front of an audience and you said, would the best LED company step forward? Dude, even the Mars, even Mars LEDs would come forward, hold the mic and they'd be like, we're the best. Mars LEDs would be like, well, since you're going to fail, why would you spend more? Our LEDs are cheaper. So they're the best. They'll save you money. And then the expensive companies will show up. Oh, we've got. We've got wavelengths and bands and we got 2.2 megajoules. And if you go 88 miles an hour, we'll transport you into a winter. And it's like a beer commercial where girls will be falling all over you. I'll tell you the best growers have the cheapest equipment. They've been doing it the longest. They beat the shit out of their equipment. They used to build their own ballast because it was cheaper. They use wing hoods. The best growers, they just don't kill their fucking plants. I mean, what do you think you're going to do? grow a bud no one's ever seen before how about if you're a new grower you tone it down and you learn how to grow because well like anything else there's skills i can use any equipment i can use those 1700 leds i can use 150 dollars hids i can use des single ends i can use lecs t5s cmhs plasmas i can use it all why because i just don't kill my plants by doing too much Ta -da! it's like magic and then I just buy the quality products like fresh filter, thermoflow. I just secure the room so if it does get hot because something goes wrong, it vents the heat and I don't kill my crop. So what are the real trade-offs here? The real trade-offs here is like if your dumbass walks into a dealership and says, I want the best car ever, yo, they're going to sell you the most expensive car because that's what they make the most money off of. They're not going to ask you, well, let me see, how many kids do you have? Oh, you have three kids? Oh, you probably don't want a two-seater, right? Because if you got to pick three kids up from school, when you pick up the second kid, they're going to ask you where the first kid is. And so you have to understand that there's a relationship between your garden. Are you just growing for yourself? Are you trying to take over the world? What's your risk tolerance? What's your adversity to failure? What's your budget? What's your, are you looking to do everything all at once? So if the first question out of their mouth isn't what are your goals, then you have to question what their goals are. I mean, you do that with everything else in your life, right? You do that with cars. You do that with whatever else you shop, right? You look at the reviews, you look at the different products, but I have never had anybody come to the store and tell me, listen, I read all the reviews. There's seven different LED manufacturers. Six of them were average. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what LED you buy. You all tell me the same thing. Oh, I did my research and this is the best ever. I'm going to get the most bud. I'm going to get the best bud. I'm, I'm going to win. I have no idea how to grow, but I'm going to spend an enormous amount of money. Listen, you would make more money buying the cheap shit, taking the difference and investing in gold. Just buy gold coins. The number one way to fail when growing cannabis is to buy the wrong equipment. It's to believe the marketing that the vendors are telling you about their equipment. There's like 200 nutrient companies and they're all the best. How is that fucking possible? Unless it's all the same shit. There are a dozen LED light manufacturers and they all tell you what? They're the best. How is that possible? 
when you go to a when you go to a dispensary they don't tell you what light was used to grow it they don't tell you what nutrient was used to grow it they don't tell you any of that shit because it's irrelevant so what i'm suggesting is is that if you're looking to be successful in growing cannabis there are a few best practices to do it like setting yourself up like setting yourself up in a media-based garden that grows slow. It's the highest probability of success. Not doing hydro or DWC if you don't know how to grow mixed nutrients. You come to my store and you're like, oh, I can't afford a PPM meter. And you bought an LED and a hydro system. All horsepower, no brakes. And I will tell you, it is the highest probability of failure. And so if you're, you have to ask yourself, what am I looking to accomplish? Am I just growing for myself? Dude, if you're just growing for yourself, I mean, you could set up a garden from two to $500. If you're looking to take over the world, it's still even more important because you're buying more equipment. And so again, fresh filters, hyperfan, thermal flow ducting, get yourself the right lights, get yourself the right equipment and right does not equal expensive understand what you're trying to accomplish do you want one light where you have a 90 day to harvest two lights where you get a harvest every 60 days three lights where you get a harvest every 30 days now if you're going to sell it fuck do you really want one harvest every 90 days and then you got to store it and stack it and keep it from getting bud rot fuck buy three 400 watt lights instead of a thousand get a half a pound a month instead of a pound and a half every three months that makes way more sense than buying a ridiculous LED light or a ridiculous amount of nutrients or a fuzzy logic controller. All right, listen, let me, let me get out of the back here. Let me walk up to the front. I think we've gone over, I think we've probably gone over that enough. Let me get back up here to the front. Uh, let me sit down here. We'll get back on to, okay. Again, I'm the grow boss. I'm sitting here in the back of, um, I'm sitting here in the back of a hydroponic store. So you can trust me when I tell you, I get the same questions all the time. And it's more important that you understand the equipment than I'll tell you a joke I make. One of the jokes I make about new customers, you know what we sell in the store? We sell hopes and dreams, but with a 99, with a, you know, 85% failure rate, how could, how could it be otherwise? We sell hopes and dreams. That's why it's so important that you buy my book, the grow book and equipment guide. It goes over everything you need to be successful. The trade-offs, the nutrients, how to measure them. And if you want more information or you want to call my webcast, I do a weekend webcast, Saturdays and Sundays. It starts 10 a.m. We do 10 a.m. We do four or five hours on the weekend. The number is 84 Grow Boss. If you have any questions, of course, you can always sign up. Uh, you can always sign up for my consultation. This is $49 an hour. You're, you're about to spend $3,500 in equipment. Call me up. Let's talk about the right equipment that you need. I mean, most of the people that call me up that are about to spend $3,500 spend $900 to $1,250 instead. So you can save $2,500 by calling me up, talking to me about the equipment. Again, my website's thegrowboss.com. I've got sick deals on product for you like Clonex. I've got an ultimate RO system that's cheaper than your local hydro store. It's cheaper than Home Cheapo. Um, you know what I mean? You buy a fresh filter after a couple of years, you got a little bit of filter fresh. It, I mean, you buy a high quality filter, you can clean it. Listen, I've got a mega meter three in one. It lasts longer than any of those ridiculous, expensive $150 name brand meters that you're going to buy. Light rail, light movers. Here's another great piece of equipment that's going to get you 25% more. Why? Because light, water, CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks for watching another video. Great. Have a good day. Thanks so much.